just talking about um, different skill sets or whatever. And, uh, you know, I do, besides designing guitars and stuff like with you, I later in life I've gotten into culinary development. And for uh, I do it for BJ's Brew House. I do it for several people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, billion-dollar company. And, and it's really interesting to me how it's the same toolkit, whether it's making a record or barbecuing or doing culinary development. But I think the one you can't fake the most is the music. I can fake a recipe, okay? I can basically steal it and maybe cut a couple corners and discuss it enough for people like it. Kind of playing your... I, I'm hoping to pick up stuff from, from you, just like when I watch uh, John or Steve Vai or Luke or Albert play, I'm hoping to pick up something, you know, some not steal their licks, but just what... What process did they go through in their mind to to get that way? You know, what what decisions? What did they cut out in order to make room for this? You know, what you've made this recording like a fun thing, and and put brought people together very organically. It didn't start out to be what it is, right? No, it started out as as a simple project. But you're just you got this infectious personality that that draws people in and and makes people want to, you know. Add to it. That's that's how that, I think that's why you've had crossover success with your, you know, from going from this business to that business, um, and this craft to that craft. You know, I think it's. I, I guess thank you because what it is, I think it's. There's nothing I am interested in that I'm not passionate about. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Now that I'm getting older, it's like, you know, it just. So I'm sort of I'm treading water to say, hey, I really love everything. I can see, you know, everything looks really interesting to me. When you talk about you're trying to pick up something and not necessarily the licks from a, a Luke or a John Petrucci yeah. or something like that, that, that's age and maturity speaking. Because when you were 20, you were probably trying to figure out the licks. Yeah, good good point. Uh, it's true. To me, just the thought process, the which discipline... You know, do, do, the, do the disciplines they have in practice carry forward to decisions they make in everyday life? That's why when I, when I was on the tour bus with Steve Vai, you know, it was, it was really cool seeing, like, just, just the little choices that everybody would make, you know, in, in real life. You know, where I've got this to do and I've got that to do. I'm going to do this first. Or I'm going to, no, I haven't got time to tell them to wait. I've got to do this. You know, like I said, observing the whole package. Because, you know, every minute of our lives we have little decisions that we can make that that you know lead us to who we are to me there's a like a primal series of tools you have the ones that you can use under duress with no thought whatsoever and then there's the intellectual ones where i say i understand the theory of that yes i can play this difficult part yes i can do this but when you're improvising on stage and you you haven't got time to think about it it's like what do you you know you what can you just instantly pull out of the hat those are more your primal sensibilities at work Aren't there. Aren't those your favorite? Of, well, I, I like to add to it, though. And it takes a certain number of repetitions of intellectually knowing something before you can put it in your, I can do this in my sleep, with primal sensibility. Well, you have to, to have the physical command to match the primal thought. Yeah, but it, it has to connect, to, I think, you know, it didn't be part of your soul. Like, if you just... You know, just when you're frustrated, you go, ah, like that. I want to be able to do that musically and have it, you know, not suck. You know, have it, have it be something powerful. So when I'm, you know, if, if I'm frustrated on stage and something, and you, things are going wrong, instead of having it be a negative, make it be into a positive. Just get that little burst of energy that, you know, but have it, you know, have the, the chops ready to where you'll play something that's in the right key, in the right notes, and, and make sense. But you've done that since the day I met you. But I, you're always trying to, you know, learn and improve, you know? You know, I, I have lots of friends that are guitar players that got to a certain point, and usually they made more money. You know, And once they got to that, they stopped playing guitar. You know what I mean? The, the thing that got them there no longer... The woods are full of those guys. I'm never going to stop playing guitar. Well, it's, it's a tough business, though, because, you know... Like, like you said, you get to the point where suddenly it, it, you got more work than you can do, and 
what happens? Well, your agent's calling, the manager's calling, and, and pretty soon you just this crushing pressure to where it's not something you're elected to do. It's work that you can never stop. Like, you know, you're disappointing somebody if you take a day off. I think a great part of this record is it got us together today. Uh, it, like Steve, I said, it's, it's great. When was the last time you sat around and, and had, you know, an informal musical listening party? <laughs> well, this is kind of like um, having them put a document on the wall with the people who, who wrote the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking around, trust me, I'm going, people need to know how helpful you were to me on this record. And well, you need to accept it. I, I was just listening like a friend would. A you friend have people who's because, because God you, gifted, talented, and you. I, don't know, I get to say this. I really do. <laughs> you, you. I get to say it too. Okay, you go first. Okay, then. Me. because of your station of being a, a boss of a big company and your success, you know, taking over after your dad's company, growing the company, expanding the company, doing you know new products, new ventures, and everything, and inc incorporating all this with the love of music. You know, you, you might get some people that would say, oh yeah, that's awesome, man, and with whatever you do. And you come to your oldest friends when you want to hear reality. You know what I mean? If you can't hear reality, that's why people in every band, they like, they, this guy been my roadie for 40 years because he's the only guy that will tell me, you know, when, I, when I'm screwing up. And, you know, I, I'm saying I, I will listen to it and tell you exactly what I think. And, and maybe that was beneficial to have. No, 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 it was, I think you saw, I would send it, I'd do my homework and get back to you. It was, it was awesome. You, I mean, it, it was like a new revelation for me. Somebody just listened to, to my suggestion, one, and acted on it, two, <laughs> two things that, that have never happened in my life before. Well, no. <laughs> you're talking to the wrong people. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I'm exactly I know what I'm saying. I, got, I have Steve Morse taking the time, care, and love, and telling it to me straight. Yeah. And you know what you, what you did is that I think you know that I'm not full of shit. So when I told you what my approach was to being that I was going to try and be as good as I can, as long as I can now, and not phone it in, if I was lying the first critique, I would have argued with you about. Instead, I went straight to the woodshed. You definitely and uh, one, I, th I think I have a limited set of, of innate talents, which I think every person has. Right. But one of mine is I can spot talent. And I've, I've picked people to, for musical jobs and for other jobs based where they had less experience than somebody else, but I could see that this person just has talent. When Jimmy... And John decided to do this with, record with you. That's why I said, you know, you know, if there's any way I can help, I'd love to. Because I think this is long over. You know, I, I love the idea of you doing something that you love. And, and I love the swingy, uh, sort of great basic feel that, that John gives everything, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so easy to play him. He's, he's just, you know, look, I got... I, you're starting off with Jim Cox and John Furrow. Yeah. If you screw that up, you got to be a real, it's, real dirt bag. It's okay? true. It's a, you know what I mean? And and the the fact is, um, man, I, my music's over without them. I don't. Want, here's the other thing. I don't want to go meet new friends. <laughs> you know, I don't want to meet a new drummer. I don't want to try and find another keyboard player. Hey, Jimmy and John. Yeah, that's it's it's wonderful too that they that they got into it to, you know, to this extent. It's funny, Jim hadn't heard the record until today. It's his record. <laughs> he, I He's, mean, he played on it, yeah. he critiqued it, he, he helped produce it, but when it came down to the masters, and the, today's the first day he heard it. He said, hey, great job. Well, I, I, I purposely wanted to, you know, leave as much distance as I, possible. I cut you what, off after. Yeah, I know. Because of that. So, so that I could, Listen to it and appreciate it, and, and it's and that's that's the whole thing. Is it sounds good and it's fun record. You know, it sort of reminds me of like uh, Tom Petty with a bunch of 
you know, with lots of guests, where it just sounds great and, and is a good feeling. Well, you record. introduced me to, to uh, Bill and Rich, too. Yeah. Sounds like a country duo, <laughs> Bill and Rich, you know. Uh, but Bill was really great, and Rich got great ears. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you could. It's, it's, it's probably really revealing to you to see, you know, what, I, how much help, you know, artists can have if they work with the A-team. You know, how, how easy it can be. Here's what you live for in life. You live for a place where you're having so much fun where you have no idea what time it is. But you know exactly where you are in time and song. And playing music, you, it's all about time, but you've, you're suspended there. Yeah, it's engrossing, yeah. To the exclusion of the other problems how in could life. You, how could you not think that's a drug and, and a good one? You're right. It's, it's, it's a great substitute for drugs. When something great is happening in real time, to be laser sharp because it feels just as good. Okay? And that, that playing music in the studio when I was in, doing solos, like I said, I thought I was soloing just like everybody else. Dave Murado, who pr produced the first record, and John took me aside in the first break. He goes, You just did 17 different solos. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I said, no, um, you know that's not normal. I said, I'm sorry. I said, no, it's really good. Don't apologize. It's, it's, a, it's a different experience that they have. Most people, like, by the time they get to the fifth or sixth take, if they're doing that many, they're, they're, they're going to start repeating themselves more. And, that, that, and part of that is because, you know, you want to get it done and don't want to waste the... The, everybody's time or you know that you know that we got to get this much done and this you know you just have a feeling of you only have this much time okay so we go back to the thing you were talking about about how you there's the practice time and all that stuff and i think that practice time and gaining those additional control of the guitar is what keeps you from repeating yourself having a better vocabulary you got a better chance of not repeating yourself. It, and it can work the other way around to where what you play is resembles very closely what you practice. And, and it's easy for the practice to become very repetitive. So, you know, I do encourage people to practice, but I encourage them to play differently than they practice. Like practice this to fix this particular problem and make yourself better in that way. Then forget it. And when you play, just open up your heart and soul and, Hope, you know, to, the, the idea is to not think about your fingers very much. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's suspension. It's like, yeah. okay, now we're going. Um, I think the mind of the guitar player is pretty interesting here. It's pretty intense. We, we, we've got some really intense energy here. I'm going to talk about um, the different players, and I didn't do this with other people. Oh. I didn't get around to it, but let's start with Steve Lukather. Oh. Lukather is, he's, he literally is the guy that could sit down with a chart and do an entire album in the studio in one day, just and play the perfect rhythm parts. And that, it turns out that's what he did in hundreds of cases. And then uh, on, on the other hand, he's, he's a great singer-songwriter, guitar player, who can write hit songs and collaborate with people on hit songs. Then... He's an awesome soloist who loves a jazzy improvisational approach with, with technique, you know, bending, soul, legato, then picking, and then he can, he's like the guy that can do it all, you know? And it's so fun. It? Yeah, he is, he is very, very funny, very, very entertaining man to hang out with. <laughs> now let's flip over to Steve Vai and his track. Did that surprise you? Yeah, yeah, he's... Steve is, well, it would have surprised me more if I hadn't played in that G G3 tour with him where we're trading fours, you know, Joe would play, I would play, Steve would play, back and forth like that. And, and just to see how, you know, like I said in, 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 uh, earlier when we were talking, Steve would play along with it for a little while and then they start to just go out and say, well, I'm going to go 
stand over here. You guys, you guys can stay in that straight space. I'm going to get a little weirder here and show you, you know, that, that you can break it up a little bit. He, he's just, he's sort of the king of, of alternate phrasing, you know, dynamics, a, a different way of looking at it. And in his, in his track, you can hear, I don't know, probably several dozen ways of phrasing uh, of making a phrase and, and, and involving different techniques. You know, here's a, here's a double stop, here's a bend to that, here's a pre-bend on the whammy, here's a bend sharp on the whammy, here's a bend with the, with the fingers, here's a double stop, here's the, the wah with the, 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 the whammy at the same time, you know, and it just goes on and on and on, and it's all entertaining and, and evenly spaced. His, his, where he decides to play some of his fills, yeah, <laughs> that's surprising. Yeah, and oh, just it's, it's it's absolutely brilliant because and they're also sh shorter. A lot of them, mm -hmm. just some of the where he places those is to me that that's that concept of challenging time to me, where you kind of just you know where it is, but you're not going to put it exactly where uh, people are going to expect it. Yeah, he's he's really got a, got a unique sense of. Uh, of phrasing and, and, like I said, very fresh sounding. It's a lot like him as a person. Yeah, he's he's fascinating to talk to anytime. Yeah, uh, Albert. Albert, the king, the Mister. I just fluid. Everything he plays is so fluid and and effortless sounding, and uh, he, he is just one of those super limber people that, you know, he he figured it out and it's it just comes easily to him to, um, uh, we played, I, I said this before too, we played all those shows in a row, um, I think 18 or 19 shows consecutively. Every time he did a, the same songs, he played differently, you know, different solos and it was so, so, I don't know, inspiring for me. He's fiery. He's a, it's a, it's an, a, the ballads he sits a, but he's pushing always. You notice? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we would push each other. I remember that. And, uh, I love when he, when he get fired up and, and really go for it, you know, with this. Now, I, uh, I love, I've said everybody's a different, got a different father. I love everybody's work on this record. I think John Petrucci, really did show, I think he surprised, I mean, everybody knows how good Dream Theater is, how good it is. I think the thought process, the humor, and the sheer technique he displays, and the, the, the understanding the melody, the counter melody, the harmony, um, I, I think that's, a, I think that's a, a, a significant guitar piece of work. It's, it's, yeah, it's beautifully done, arranged, but the, the, he's, he's got his, his technique is so perfect that he can do a little flourish and ex execute it so amazingly that that it it adds a real sparkle to him playing I'm going to play the simple melody but I'm not going to make it that simple you know yeah. it's a simple melody but I'm going to put in some stuff that you know three exactly. different octaves <laughs> just on the way yeah. to finish yes, the melody the there's like a couple triplets and effortless yeah he he's He's always been that way, but he just keeps getting better. Yeah, he's 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 a good barbecuer now too. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, I've, I've worked on him, Steve. I don't know how to thank you anymore. I mean, it just it was it was so fun. I'm it, glad to be you part of it. You taught me a lot. You and just like lot. Steve Vine was saying, we're I, you know, I volunteered because I thought it was a great idea. Just. Sterling's doing an album. Let's, yeah. I, this this one you haven't recorded your parts on yet. Hey, let me <laughs> let me try that. Like I said, I'm glad because I didn't know what I was going to play in that stop break. <laughs> I didn't know the what I was going to do either. Well, it was, it's beautiful. It's uh, airy. It it's nice. Yeah. It's perfect. Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> and happy birthday, late. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was January. <laughs>